okay? Here it is. I've got three props now. I'm making money off of this Mormon shit. I really am. Here's the one prop. Here's the two prop. And I can't see crap. I can't even see what my glasses are on. But with sunglasses, I can't see you no matter what. All right, so I, I got to take my glasses off. <laughs> yeah, it's still that ugly face I still have that the Mormon church caused. Let me finish uh, tonight. <laughs> one last video. I was <laughs> just watching one of my own videos. You hear me say that shit all the time. I don't know why, because I look at them and they just give me comfort. I say to myself, that guy really knows. <laughs> and I go, it's me. <laughs> Anyway, I was watching one of my videos, and up comes uh, one Mormon advertisement after another. <laughs> they the crawler must have, if his name is David, advertised within four minutes. I just put a video up, and I just clicked on it to make sure everything was cool. And <laughs> there's the Mormon church at my neck again, advertising. Well, I thought... Let it go, let it go. <laughs> so I watched it a few more seconds, and here comes the second Mormon <laughs> tithing ad. <laughs> Come up with your pesos, your euros, and your dollars. Uh, they're making sure that <laughs> people who look at me have a chance to look at them. Uh, so anyway, this one <laughs> I haven't even talk, talked to you about, okay? This is another Mormon <laughs> doctrine that is under the table. You're not going to see a lot of this in writing. And um, what it was, <laughs> it was a discount, 10% discount. Now, I wonder where they came up with that number. I don't know. A 10% discount for food storage program. Now, let me tell you something about this, because I've been in the church 50 years, a half a century. I've seen a lot of stuff. This ain't my first rodeo. The church had a very stringent and strict policy, uh, even when I was a child in the 1960s. And they said, <laughs> basically, that the Russians were going to bomb us and we would all be dead. So some of my Mormon friends built bomb shelters. Now you young people, you don't even know what the hell a bomb shelter is. It, what it is, is it's a, um, uh, a septic tank <laughs> with a roof on it. <laughs> it's all concrete and it has this heavy duty iron opening like a submarine that you can go down in and close the <laughs> Now here was the discussion. Here was the serious discussion in the 60s with the Mormon church. The Mormons wanted to know if the family jumped down into the bomb shelter and the neighbors were pounding <laughs> on the roof and going, cling, 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 let us in, let us in. Well, the Mormons wanted a prophecy of whether to let their neighbors in. <laughs> Some Mormons said yes because it was Christ-like. Uh, a lot of the leading Mormons said, hell no, don't open that hatch. They'll come in and eat your food and your water. And they had a fair warning. Ah. So that went on in the 60s. And um, my father, <laughs> the child molester, <laughs> like he had time to do any of this, but he found time as a Mormon oh, high priest. Uh, so he went down and, and we got gallons of water. We had probably 150 gallons of water uh, in our garage. Now you put a little bit of bleach in this water and <laughs> after a few years it eats through the plastic anyway so uh, we had all that water stored. Then he went and um, bought wheat. Now the wheat is important to Mormons. It's kind of like a secret food that you know you'll go to the celestial kingdom if you have wheat stored. So we had these, uh, was it number 10 cans? I think it was like number 30 or 100 can, a five gallon can with a lid on it. And you would put wheat um, in it. It wasn't flour, it was just wheat came off of the fields. Well, after a couple of months, 
we looked over beside the water where the wheat was, and these weevils. <laughs> What a waste of money! These weevils were coming out of the cans. And so my dad did some research, the, the great farmer. <laughs> we lived in an upper middle class neighborhood in uh, Ojai, California, up on the hill. Well, he was no farmer. Uh, he spent his time child molesting as a Mormon. But anyway, um, we had to throw away all the weevils and all the wheat that the weevils were eating. So we learned a lesson that um, when you buy wheat, you buy it fumigated, not unfumigated, because the word unfumigated means there's weevils in it <laughs> and beetles and bugs. <laughs> and you don't want to see that in your breakfast bowl. <laughs> that doesn't look like special K in there. <laughs> so we wasted all that money on that uh, unfumigated wheat and we had bugs like cockroaches, great big huge ones that were eating wheat. They were healthy. <laughs> you couldn't kill them with a fly swatter. You needed a two by four. <laughs> so we had five kids in the family. We weren't rich. Um, and here we wasted all that money on food that we couldn't eat and water that we couldn't drink. Well, you know, these diehard Mormons like my dad, he was fanatical. And every time you're fanatical uh, in the Mormon church, you're a child molester. There's no doubt in my mind. You are a sexual deviant. You are a child molester if you're fanatical in the Mormon church. I bear testimony. <laughs> so dad gets, again, a whole bunch of these cans. And of course, us kids, we're free labor. <laughs> it's the Mormon church. Everything is free labor. Monson gets the money, but we do the work. So we had to load these cans up again with uh, fumigated uh, wheat. Well, that was all right. But then my dad <laughs> decided that when the Russians attacked us, because this was during the John Birch Society, most of you are so damn young, you'd never heard of the John Birch. Barry Goldwater running for a president, and uh, the, uh, the uh, Russians are going to bomb us. Well, that was the, the uh, and the, uh, you've heard of the Cuban Missile Crisis. I went right on during my mid-60s there. So anyway, Dad said, well, we need to learn to eat this food. <laughs> This is the food that they dropped on the floor of our garage and then they threw a chemical into it and threw a tarp over it for two days and then us kids shoveled it up into the can and now we're going to eat this off the garage floor. Okay. It's the way the Mormons think and that's the way my dad thought. Well, we, he said, okay, we are going to grind our own uh, flour uh, from the wheat. Now, of course, I'm a city kid. I, have, I thought you went down and just bought a, a, a thing of Pillsbury flour and made biscuits or whatever with it. Well, no, uh, he wanted to obey the prophet, obey the prophet, you know, follow the prophet, all that stuff. So he bought, <laughs> what a Mormon, he bought a hand wheat grinder. Now, we had five kids in the family and two adults. Do you know how long... <laughs> You have to grind an, a hand grinder of wheat to get a bowl of cereal, and it was cracked wheat cereal. It wasn't flour yet. Well, we tried cracked wheat cereal uh, in the Mormon, or uh, yeah, the Mormon tradition there, and for breakfast, and uh, we weren't allowed to put fresh cow's milk. <laughs> we had to have the Mormon powdered milk. I hated that. I still hate powdered milk because I've been, you know, traumatized and there's a trigger up there. So here I am, hot <laughs> cranking, because I'm free. Don't buy a motor for the damn thing. It'll cost electricity. You've got to be frugal as a Mormon. So I'm out there grinding my, my breakfast, and I put it in the bowl, and I put in the, the, the uh, skim milk, uh, powdered milk. And I look at it, and I go, holy shit. I, <laughs> I'm only 14. <laughs> I'm not going to eat that. I'd rather die. So I'd go to school hungry. <laughs> I'd go to seminary in the morning hungry because I wasn't going to eat that. And then my brother <laughs> had to grind his, and my sister had to grind, and my other brother had to grind, and my last baby brother, you know, the three-year-old, he's got two hands. <laughs> and you need to be strong. I'm your father, and you need to be strong. And so he's out there. Well, you see that fanatical crap going on, and it was a revelation. Oh, my God. 
Now, now here's the, that that in and of itself is funny. It is a funny program, and if you're not uh, prepared, uh, your Mormon neighbors are not going to open that bomb shelter door for you. You had a warning, and you didn't obey, so you get punished. There's the the punitive. <laughs> do what we tell you to do, or your ass is grass. Well. There was an additional requirement back in those days that you were to have a year's supply of not only food and water, but for um, fuel. <laughs> now, I lived in Massachusetts, okay? And I know a little bit about fuel oil and a fuel oil burning tank. And when that great big huge truck, 18-wheeler, comes up in the front yard and they take that three-inch hose and put it down into your tank, and the tank, I think, takes 250 gallons, and it lasts a month, maybe three weeks, four weeks, and a hard winter. Well, you'd have to park three 18-wheeler trucks in that yard to get through the winter. How the hell in a residential area are you supposed to put that many gas tanks? Even if you dug up the ground and put a thousand gallons of, of uh, fuel oil and or gasoline, for your car in the ground, you're sitting on an atomic bomb. It doesn't matter if the Russians bomb you. When your four-year-old goes out there with matches, your house is gone. So there's the uh, the ridiculousness of um, food and um, water and fuel for a year. Now, the, the, the philosophy that came early in the Mormon church while I was still born and alive was the evils of the dole. <laughs> the dole is handing out free money. Now, I don't see a lot of evil. If I'm the one getting the money, I don't see a lot of evil. But the rich people, they see a lot of evil in the evil of the dole. Well, it was Ezra Taft Benson and, oh my gosh, David O. McKay and some of the early prophets there. Um, they said in those days, if you didn't have a year's supply of food, the church wasn't going to help you because you weren't being responsible. Well, my dad was a printer. He, he ran the printing presses, linotype presses in those days um, for printing the newspaper. He didn't have that kind of money. Do you know how much it would cost you to store a year's supply of fuel, food, and water? For a family of seven, I would think you're up around $10,000. I would think you're somewhere in the area of $10,000. Well, if the Mormons in those days didn't put that $10,000 up for the food and the year's supply, um, you weren't going to get any church welfare. Now, there's exceptions there, because there were some bishops. <laughs> Not very many, but there were a couple that had brains. And they would help people uh, now and then who were having financial problems. So the amount that you were to store was ridiculous. The, the danger of putting that fuel in a residential area is insanity. But Jesus will protect you. The Mormon Jesus told David O. McKay and the early prophets that's what we were supposed to do. And of course, my dad was a fanatic in the Mormon church. That's why he molested my sister, my, uh, my stepsister he molested also, and two or three kids in the neighborhood just kind of round out his uh, career. And uh, he's still active and he's a high priest in the uh, Topeka, Kansas ward. They promoted him. I, I don't know, in the high priest quorum, I was only in there a little while, but there wasn't child molesting as one of the, the requirements of being in there. But anyway, um, it's silliness. It's dangerous and it's silly. Well now, with all of these earthquakes and the nuclear meltdown in Japan and other kinds of tsunamis and things that are going on, the church now doesn't say too much about a year's supply of food. But there's about four or five companies here in Utah, and one of them was just advertising across my neck on the video, and he was giving 10% off. I, I wonder where he came up with that number. In other words, you give 10% to the church so that Monson can fly his Learjet, and then we're going to give you a 10% discount because you're going to buy all this worthless shit that, that we have a markup on, and we're going to make money, and you're going to lose twice. <laughs> You're going to lose twice. So now they're into the 72-hour uh, kit, okay? Now, again, I, I've been out for a while, so I may be making an ass of myself right here. And I'm sure the Mormons go, he is. 
and I don't care because they've made an ass of themselves for 180 years. I'm just making it for 15 minutes here. <laughs> but anyway, um, these companies are trying to make money off of the Mormons uh, in Utah with a 72-hour kit. Now, I don't know what's in a 72-hour kit. I don't know if that's 15 or 20 Daddy. condoms. I don't know if that is a, a whole bottle of KY jelly. I don't know how to get through 72 hours. And I guess uh, you can hear my kids on the intercoms. Uh, kids, yeah. So anyway, now they make 72-hour kits. And in those 72-hour kits, you're supposed to have food and flesh and condoms. <laughs> and porn. I don't know what else is in a 70, but they sell that sucker. I don't know, 100, $100, $150. Anywhere there's a prophecy, there's Mormons that capitalize on it. It's like beneficial life insurance company. I had a friend, and I still do. He's a, a polygamist, and he has, um, uh, he's an insurance agent. Well, he used to have to compete all the time because the Mormons when he tried to sell them mortgage insurance or whatever, they go, no, no, I'm buying it from the um, the gov or from the uh, Mormon Church. I'm buying it from the Mormon Church, and he couldn't compete with that. Well, well, the Mormon Church paid uh, five hundred million dollars to try to keep beneficial life afloat, but there was so much corruption and so many general authorities stealing money out of it that it went bankrupt. Now they have the money, I think, for future claims. But there's no more beneficial life. It's dead. It's gone. So once the church milks you with your tithing and your fast offering and your um, temple donations and building fund and, and other kinds. Of, now, they haven't had building fund for 20 years. Uh, but anyway, they did when I was uh, LDS. And uh, they used to take your money. So they'll milk you for a year's supply of food, uh, bomb shelters. <laughs> Wheat grinders. I still see wheat grinders here in Utah on a discount. <laughs> but they never come with a little man or a little woman to turn the handle. It's always your family for free. So anyway, if you want to be a good Mormon, this is under the table. Uh, you'll see a little bit of writing on it. Uh, and it shifted over the years because Jesus has said uh, it's probably not as important <laughs> to have a bomb shelter. I don't think a bomb shelter helps you in a tsunami. <laughs> I don't think that's a place you want to be in the next tsunami. Uh, you will be, uh, you know, the Pele Ale. Oh, God, hear the words of my mouth. The damn water is going to fill this thing, and we can't open the, the uh, hatch. So anyway, there's your uh, information, uh, informal information, on the Mormon Church and how they <laughs> are the comedy act of two centuries. Thanks.